In this video presentation, we're going to look at the skills required in order to terminate a twin socket outlet. I've mimicked here on my installation cables coming into a surface box from both sides, and we'll look at the technique in order to get the conductor length correct and terminate into a twin socket. And then I've done the conventional straight into the top into a box, and again, we'll look at the conductor length and how to terminate those conductors into the back of the socket outlet. So if we bring the camera in, we'll see nice and close how I'm going to terminate the conductors into two different style of socket outlets, making sure I double over the terminations of the required length and I need enough cable slack that we can get it in and out the box comfortably without being too long and certainly not being too short. So I'm going to make off my first socket outlet here. Okay, it's a Crabtree branded one and we can look in the back of it. We've got two earthing terminals here with the symbol for earth. So we've got CPC to be connected in these two and when there's two terminals, I like to put one CPC connection in each of those two terminals. Then we've got line and we've got neutral. Okay, we're gonna double those terminations over and we're gonna work out how um, deep the doubling over needs to be in order to get them in and we don't see any copper. Let's dress our cables to the right length or cut them to the right length. So if they're coming in from the sides as they are here, I like them to go past the box for my students between 50 and 70 mil. So we've gone 50 to 70 mil past in the direction. So we've gone past it the same, this side 50 to 70 mil this way. So our cables are longer than the box in the opposite direction they came in. So coming from this side, and they're at least 50 to 70 mil longer than this way. Coming from this side, at least 50 to 70 mil longer this way. So let's start off by doing, let's do the line conductors first. So let's take our knife, okay, and we're gonna do that. Well, before we do that, let's work out how deep these terminals are. You're gonna need your electrician screwdriver when doing socket outlets and not the wonderful terminal screwdriver that can go back in the toolbox for lighting circuits only. So if I open up my line connection, and then if I drop in a conductor I've got uh, kicking around here, let's perhaps drop this one in here. Okay, I can start working out. It's not very deep, that one isn't, okay, at all. Okay, so when doubling that over, if I wanna have a little practice go, I can work out how deep to go with that. So let's take this, shorten it down again. So students to practice beforehand with a scrap piece of conductor in order to work out how far to double it over. Even that's a little bit touch and go even at that length. So I'll trim it back again, trim back again, and then I'll use my doubling over technique. Slightly less than half, fold it against the pliers, and then crush it up, like so. Let's see the depth now. Okay, so that's, that's not really deep at all. Some are considered to be deeper than that that will work this. So students, remember, have a little practice first, get used to how far we're going in. The line connection neutral will be the same. Often the CPC has a different depth, so we'll have to practice again when we get there. So that's my practice attempt. Just leave it there so I can see it. So let's start off with the line. I know, again, some people remove the insulation around the brown line conductor using other kit, but I'm gonna use my knife as usual. So I take that one, press nice and firmly. Pop that one off. If I bring the other one back, I can work the lengths out to be the same, like so. And then around again, and pop that off. Remembering the insulation material around here is thermoplastic PVC, has a maximum operating temperature of 70 degrees C. So we're ready to double these over, exactly the same as before, slightly less than half. Fold them against my pliers, and then close up the gap, like so. Take the second one, and exactly the same as I just did. We can do the neutrals afterwards. Okay, like so. So I've got used to that. So I can take my line conductors, I can pop those into the appropriate place, do a visual polarity check, that says L there. So I'm gonna pop my two line conductors into here. Now are they gonna go flat or side by side? I'm gonna do flat, so in other words, one top, one bottom as we go in like so, push them all the way in, can't see any copper, get my electrician screwdriver and obviously tighten those terminations up. Sometimes easier when you haven't got a tripod in the way. So tighten those up, nice and tight, okay, into position. And then we can repeat the same process obviously for our neutral terminations, which is down here. So be careful, our neutrals are down here, got to get an angled screwdriver in on this style. So let's back that screw back. A bit tricky to get it in. But it'll be tricky for me, it'll be tricky for my students. So back the screw back. We can do exactly the same with the neutrals. Try and be a little bit quicker this time. Just what we've just seen. 
So we've got a little bit used to the length now, having done the first one. Okay, like so, pressing reasonably firm with my knife. Pop those off, double over my terminations, like so, and like so. Let me just trim that a fraction. Okay, so that's my two neutrals done. And what I'm going to do is when I put them in, I'm going to have them sitting one on top of the other, like so. So I didn't go side by side, I sat one on top of the other when I put them into the terminations. Let's pop our neutrals in, so drop one in, drop my second neutral in, I've got them one on top of the other, so I need to feed them in at the same time, like so, always more difficult with a tripod in a way guys. So let's see, I've got enough, oh hang on, didn't quite back the screw back enough. Okay, that might get it a little easier. And we pop those two in front to back. So one on top of the other. Terminate those up, so tighten those off. Like so. Just make sure they don't come out, so I push them back in there. Difficult now to see on the camera, I know, but I'm pushing them down as I'm tightening them off. And those two are in position, and you can already see that we've got a reasonable length on those conductors, okay, which is what I like. I like them to spread out within the box. If they're a fraction long, we can always trim them back. If they're too short, replace the cables. Onto the CPCs. Okay, so let's have a look at those. Uh, let's have a look at the depth of the CPC terminals first. So we're going to use both of them. So there's one either side. Let's see how deep they are. So back the screw back. And let's just drop a little bit of uh, conductor in there just to have a look. Oh, not very deep at all. They're hardly going at all. So they're going to be a lot smaller to get into there, making sure we screw into the copper and not the PVC. So let's measure these off to the appropriate length. I'm going to use them to, uh, one against the other as a guide. So that's my CPC how to sheath in to identify the conductor. The line and neutral are two five. In this cable, the CPC is one five. Remembering CPC stands for circuit protective conductor, like so. And we're gonna double those off. So I'm just gonna have a look now. How much, how far are we going to the holes? That's probably gonna be about perfect, that one. Double that one over, like so. Doubled over my CPC and drop that into one of the two CPC terminations. If your socket only has one, obviously you're gonna to have to put the two in together, but where there is two, Gary likes you to use one in each of the terminating points, and we'll talk about that in the classroom for best practice moving forward. So tighten that one off. And we'll have a look here, I'm just gonna fractionally, I've just got a little bit, a tiny bit off that one. Okay, CPC, double over my CPC. Go into the second of the holes, gonna to have to back this one back. Some sockets already have them backed off, some don't. Push that through there. Hold it into position. Tighten it off so I don't pull back out. Tighten that down. Okay, so you can see my conductors are of a reasonable length. When they're that fraction longer, they are easier to get into a box than being too short. It isn't the other way around. Short is good. Short isn't good. Fraction longer. And if they are too long, it doesn't matter. We're practicing. We would trim them back. But let's see. So we're going to position them down into the socket itself. So making sure that we pull the cables down into positions so they can easily go back into the outlet itself. So I've dressed those into the back of the actual socket outlet. And that went down with ease. Okay, it comes up. Down with ease. Important next trick. Lean it back, tighten them back off again. Give all the terminations a little nip up. Now you've moved them around and wiggled them. It's worth getting back in with your screwdriver and just checking that they haven't settled in and got a little bit looser. So we've done the top ones and then that little tricky neutral down there. Okay, so I've tweaked them up. I've got to all that on site. Best practice, push it down into position, pull it back, recheck your terminations are tight and that can go down. See the length easily goes down into the box. Too short is too difficult. The correct length will go back in a box if you spread the cables out accordingly. Let's look at the second socket. 
So we've got a different arrangement now with this Hager socket. We go neutral, CPC with the earth symbol, CPC and the line conductor. So we'll again split the two CPCs across there, two neutrals and two line conductors. And they're all side by side. This contactum one, okay, has line, nothing here to connect to, neutral and only one CPC terminal. And in that case, we would have to put the both CPCs into the same termination. I prefer socket outlets that allows us to split the two CPCs across there. I'm going to double these cables over. I'll do that off camera. I'll just show you about the length of those conductors. So this time we've come down through the box. So our length needs to be 50 to 70 mil longer than the box in this direction. Okay, so we're going to make sure we're crucial with that. And I like this one when it's this way to be nearer the 70 mil. So I'm going to do that approximately 70 mil longer than the box for all the conductors. And then I'll prepare, prepare these conductors off camera. And then we'll just look at actually connecting them into the socket outlet and getting them tight. So I've prepared the ends of my conductors using the same technique as I did before. I dropped in a conductor, I checked its depth, I practiced one and then dropped it in. And what I noticed was the neutral and line depth is a lot shallower than the CPC. So when I've made off the doubling over of the CPCs, it is uh, larger than that of the line conductor in this case, as well as the neutral. So the CPCs go in further into the termination than the live conductors, line and neutral. So we're gonna pop those in. So again, we'll start, let's start with the neutrals. Okay, so we start with the neutrals. This time, yep, I'm going to still go one on top of the other. So I'm going to position one on top of each other. The screws are backed uh, back already. So they've gone in. Okay, you can't see any copper. Might be difficult for you to see from that angle, but you can't see any copper. And I'm going to tighten those up. Again, when you're in the workshop, I don't recommend you're trying to keep out the way of a tripod in order to do it. In we go, get those nice and tight. So I've got the first ones, let's do the line conductors next. I'm going to untangle them from within the socket. So I'm going to dress them around so they're untangled. Do the line conductor next, lay one on top of the other, like so, and then drop those two in. And again, keep some pressure in order to terminate those tight. So I say in all my videos, the one thing I never seem to do is wear my glasses. I'm using the force. So my two line conductors are in place, and now CPCs, let's dress them to suit. CPC terminal there, I'm gonna hold it in with a little bit of pressure. Tighten that one off. Okay, and then we'll tighten this one off into position like so. One more little half a turn on that maybe. Okay, right, so they're in again. So you can see there that it sits longer than the box, which is crucial to me, and they'll spread out within the box. Often DIYers and le early learning stage students cut them super short. It's not a problem in my workshop because my learners will say, what do I do if I cut the conductors too short? Take out the conductors, put a new fresh set in, and you go again. So we're gonna do exactly the same as we did before. We're gonna position it into place. So I'm gonna move them round. So I know they sit in nicely. I'm going to crush it down into position. I'm going to lift it back off and I'm going to check tighten these terminations in order to see that they're tight. Yep. And then obviously that can go down and we can fix it down using the appropriate 3.5 machine screws. So hopefully that's covered some of the skills my learners are gonna need into the workshop. So some crucial points to recap. Make sure our conductors are long enough in the appropriate direction, as discussed in the video, between 50 and 70 mil longer than the box. Then we look at practicing the doubling over of a termination for each of the holes in order to work out the depth of those. We terminate our conductors. We dress them into the back of the box first so we can see them going nice and easy. We push them back into position. We lever it forward, recheck, tighten, because they may have moved as they were settling down into position. And then we can finish it by putting it on and obviously then returning the machine screws back into the front of the socket outlet. Our socket outlet is finished. As I say to all my learners, every single termination you carry out and do should be thinking that termination has got to last 50 years. So if you're using the wrong screwdriver, it isn't tight enough, the cable is too short, the cable is crushed, there's too much conductor. Is it a circuit, a termination that will last 50 years? If you're saying no, go back, readdress it, sort it out. So once again, I hope this video has been some help.